let's start with a simple question. Uh, how many in this audience will honestly say they understand the difference between Gen AI and agentic AI? Come on, a show of hands, please. Okay, so fine. So I think there's a lot of explaining uh, to do out here. This is the interesting part where we talk about agentic AI. And here we are talking about not only chatting, but acting, where the AI systems, the AI tools, or the AI agentic systems take charge of you. And they actually take decisions on your behalf. Of course, with your consent, I, hopefully, because Rahul is staring at me, so I can see that. And in fact, uh, here's the question, uh, the caveats that come up, because there's a lot of hallucinations, biases, and other limitations that we're all going to talk about. Users are very forgiving, but enterprises may not be, and rightly so, and even governments. And that's why we have a lot of guardrails. And if you look at the Mahindra Group, it talks about AI and manufacturing, the whole uh, 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 agentic AI systems, you have done a lot with generative AI, etc. You could just quickly tell us, as a conglomerate, how do you look at these newer technologies? Um, thanks, great to be here, Leslie, uh, again talking to you and, and all of you. Talking about um, AI in a conglomerate, um, you know, when, when, when um, in 22 November, uh, we got hit with Gen AI and Chat GPT and so on, and everybody sort of woke up. Um, AI wasn't necessarily new to technologists. We already had been working on it in, in various forms and fashion. What this did is, uh, you know, the expanded the scope just tremendously. Um, what conglomerate like us did at that point, right? We were sort of early adopters. We were early waking up to the, the potential pitfalls of it and so on. And we, we ventured into our own containerization, which is now known as enterprise AI. Across this, these, these last two years, now we have evolved into not doing these small scale experiments that are different for farming, different for auto, different for Mahindra Finance, different for somebody else. But we have now formed an AI division where we have built centralized expertise that can be leveraged by everybody. And you're correct. I think the, the use cases could be anything, right? Uh, predictive maintenance through AI, which was anyway there, to, uh, you know, sort of gobbling up all the manuals that we have and um, helping my field technicians with their repair um, or giving um, GPT type uh, thing for the customer. Uh, who actually looks at a manual? I mean, car manual, has anybody picked up the manual, looked at anything? But if you want to ask a question about your car, it should be at your fingertips. So Rishi, now for the opportunities, because yours is, of course, a payment uh, uh, you know, technology platform, if I were to put it that way. And uh, you are in a very sort of sensitive area where you have all the guardrails already around you. Uh, but without uh, getting into the guardrails at this point in time, let's talk a little about the opportunities and how you have made that shift from, say, classical AI to Gen AI, now to agentic AI platforms. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and thanks, Leslie, for uh, asking this question. Uh, see, FSS uh, sits at the uh, intersection of, uh, you know, regulators, banks, and merchants. So, I mean, Generative AI, agentic AI, or any AI for that matter uh, cannot be a shiny toys for us. Uh, it has to be uh, into our operating model. So in order to achieve that, uh, we have set up our own artificial intelligence center of excellence. And the core objective of the entire AI COE was around what we call it as three Ps. That was a platform for building the scalable, explainable, and compliant AI foundation. Uh, the second P was around uh, the productivity, sorry, uh, uh, I'll come to productivity, but that was around the product. That is for infusing AI into our entire payment stack uh, to make our, you know, products more AI native, not just, you know, having AI as a wrapper. And the third P was around the productivity. That was for making our uh, workforce more smarter, uh, faster, and reliable. Now, in order to do that, uh, you know, we, have, uh, in, in, we ensure that, you know, while we are developing our platform, uh, we start with a very strong uh, governance layer, and we have set up our own trust center. We decided to, you know, start uh, identifying the products which, are more, which were more of a monolith, uh, monolith products, specific in the payments domain, 
to make it more agentic. But when when you think about you know uh, making more agentic, as as Rich also stated that you know the generative AI uh, use case could be around just like an AI co-pilot. Uh, but then if you have to take a leap and move toward agentic AI, then you have to make your product more AI native because your UI, UX, and the other configuration at the back end will not support your AI agents. And because those configurations uh, doesn't come by default, you have to think about it, you have to put a proper guardrails. Now we'll just move to uh, Ganesh, because if you remember uh, Mr. Singh when he was talking about sovereign AI, and he was talking about sovereign LLMs, uh, Ganesh's company is one of those 12 LLMs, right, uh, Ganesh, that has been chosen to develop a sovereign LLM for India. Uh, and you have focused on voice, which is, I think, very important given the illiteracy uh, levels that, I mean, not many people can read and write in a country like India. So I think voice LLMs and even visual LLMs, for that matter of fact, are going to be very, very important. Uh, Ganesh, your th quick thoughts on this. Yeah, I think uh, fundamentally what we do as a company uh, the base state, like two parts to us, right? One is obviously what we do from the R&D from a sovereign AI perspective, but second is the use cases. So I don't want to even talk about the use cases, fundamentally just like Abhishek Singhji said, it achieves two things, right, when you use voice. One is you reach out to Bharat, right? And that's typically not any of us sitting in this room, right? Uh, secondly, it's for financial inclusion, right? Uh, I'll give you a short story here. Uh, this week, uh, I spent a couple of days, uh, you know, with an MFI, right? Just going through their daily operations, uh, talk to almost every group in that uh, organization, talk to their end customers, talk to their intermediaries. So, and it is very, very clear that the kind of impact that can be made by, obviously, voice AI, but you know, broadly, I would say a bunch of these agentic AI technologies that is going to really change the face of India, right? Uh, whether it's to solve uh, the most obvious use case that we all talk about is like the account receivables or the collections, but it's also about the more important use cases of understanding conversations, building better financial products, and so on. So uh, that's a very important piece. Right? So we work with like 100 customers all across India in the financial services space. Right? What we started doing is, uh, you know, we do, uh, for example, voice AI agents, we have our own agent AI platform within that, but we also work on the deep tech components behind that. So in the voice AI space, uh, what we uh, have fundamentally found out that, you know, we might be leaders in the Indian context, but uh, when we do a voice AI kind of agent, right, uh, we have a pipeline today that says, you know, convert your voice to text, do some LLM on the text, and then convert it back to voice, right, or do some analysis on that. So where we found is a very big gap is, uh, you know, understanding emotions behind conversations. So typically when we, uh, as Indians particularly, but all across the world, when somebody asks us a question and when we say yes, the way we say yes determines whether it's a yes or a no or a maybe, right? And uh, so the emotions between, behind the conversations are equally important and sometimes more important than the conversations themselves. So we are doing a voice-to-voice -voice LLM. What we think is what's important to do something unique that will work for India but also be relevant all across the world, right? So this voice-to-voice -voice LLM, uh, you know, uh, what it will do is understand conversations, but also understand the emotions behind the conversations. But there are other benefits that are very important from a, a, a voice angle, right? Latency in real-time systems is extraordinarily important. While I'm using this kind of model we helps can, to reduce. We can come to that within the, for the challenges part of it. Uh, Amit, your role becomes a little difficult in this particular scenario because typically uh, I think enterprises, uh, I, because you have a practically a new model every second uh, day or every day per perhaps for that matter of fact and clients get very impatient. There's that FOMO factor, the fear of missing out uh, and people actually do not know what's happening in this space. You know, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, now two things out here. One is, of course, you have to tell them what's the business problem that they're solving and that this is not a shiny tool that you have to adopt. So that's a 
pretty tough task. How do you go about the task? What are your clients asking you and how do you advise them? Yeah, it's a great question and I think uh, agentic AI is something which uh, has got a lot of questions coming into everybody's mind. One of the first things which come up is, is it going to take away my job? So it is super important that as we go in to implement this or work with this, we actually prepare our staff or our people more than anything else. Uh, to tell them that it is not going to take over their jobs, but it is the agent and humans working together is super important because we implemented Salesforce ourselves and we saw that people were really scared. You know, half the people were always coming and asking, should I start looking for a job? Because you know, it starts taking actions, right? And to explain to people that no, it is not you know, judgmental decisions or difficult decisions will remain with human is something which is very important. The second thing is you have to be able to build confidence in what the agent gives back. And, and that can happen only with three main things. One is, of course, having a very trusted uh, and a unified database. The second is to have governed metadata and the third one is to make sure that we have integrated workflows. The moment you have these three things together, you start giving answers which are not hallucinations and people start trusting the data. Because the first thing people do is try and find a fault. And you know, that's where the trust starts eroding and then they will not use it. And it takes a lot of time to switch that gear again. Uh, so as I said, four key things, one is pull in your people, give them the confidence that, you know, you have to learn something more different, more complex, and let the AI agent uh, do the work that it's doing. I think I'll, I'll be inviting all of you all to give a couple of points because we have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, startups out here. Uh, two or three quick points as to what they need to do in this agentic enterprise age. I think uh, I'll just talk about, out of the experience that we've been having at Salesforce helping people actually roll this out. Um, first of all, when you're starting, start small. Start with data or outputs, the impact that which you talked about being extremely clear. If you are clear of that, then it is easier to explain. The second, of course, is have very good guardrails. The third one is have great data. The trusted unified enterprise data is super important, uh, the metadata along with the actions which are being taken should actually be all auditable. We should be able to explain them. At the same time, we should be able to control them. The moment you have these three things in place, it becomes pretty easy to start getting more and more trust in it and then helping all our people use it. Thank you. Rishi, quickly. Just a couple of points. So most of the pointers <laughs> you have already covered, but uh, yeah. So the the I mean the couple of points that I would say that uh, it it has to start with the foundation of trust. Uh, see, AI as a technology is not a challenge at all, but governance is. So you have to ensure that you know you have a very strong governance layer. Uh, and when it comes to guardrails, not just rep see there are multiple open frameworks available, but then the kind of problems that you are trying to solve. Uh, Accordingly, you have to, you know, define your own governance layer, whether it's, you know, regulatory layer, governance layer, auditability, or your, you know, guardrail layer. So all these four layers you have to work on, and I think uh, that will set the stage for you to sell your products. Um, of course, you know, trust, explainability, human first. Um, but when you are trying to sell this to an enterprise, right, ground it in the context of the enterprise. This is, this is sort of missing, I'll say this again at the cost of repetition, don't run after shiny technology, run after the outcome. Um, and, and when that is important, right, think beyond the pilots. Can you scale this? Because that's where a lot of, this, uh, I don't know if anybody saw, there's a curve that says, where's the innovation versus where's the outcome? We have to bridge the gap. Does it make a difference in my productivity? Does it make a difference in my growth pattern? Does it make a difference in my customer experience? Where are you making a difference? We should be very, very clear about. Um, otherwise, I think very well described all the other guardrails. So very quickly, uh, two points. Uh, 
don't build wrappers, build some deep tech, some differentiators uh, on top of the tech, right? The second point is, uh, you know, insist if you're working with enterprise to do uh, typically field trials, don't do POCs. <laughs> field trials work, you figure out whether there's a business value to the end customer, and if it is, he will invest in you. My simple point is don't put the technology cart before the horse. <laughs> Simply. So well, I hope you had a lovely, this was a lovely, insightful conversation. Please give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank you.